Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Yes, this is to bring your own chairs. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> there is no fellowship Friday night. So we are all going to labor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, we have been called to do something. But it is beneficial to the house of God and to the kingdom. Hallelujah. <clears throat> In verse 10, finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord. Strong in the Lord. Everyone say, strong in the Lord. Lord. That means you need to be close to him. That means you rely on him. You are living in him. Amen? And the power of his might. In other words, that's his presence. So be strong in the Lord. What's going to give you the power? His presence. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery or the wiles of the devil. It's, that's why it's important to get dressed with the full armor of God. If you didn't get dressed with the full armor of God, hell knows. And they are setting a trap because they know they can access. Why? Because the word says submit to God, then you can resist the devil. Again, this is not foo-foo religious garbage. This is a war that's going on. And if you're not going to get dressed for the battle, you're going to become a casualty. Amen? That's reality. Now look at this. It says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, evil day, every day is evil. There are no righteous days. Every day on this planet is evil. It's ruled by an evil kingdom. That means that it's dangerous. There are dangerous zones. And that's what you and I have got to begin to look at and prepare for and be protected from. Dangerous zones. Amen? In Hosea 4, 6, it tells us, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Well, lack of knowledge is going to put you in a dangerous zone. Amen? Amen? Why? Because lack of knowledge is going to promote deception. It's going to promote a great area, isn't it? And it's going to promote a black area. Don't start, Katie girl. <laughs> In 2 Timothy chapter 3. Hallelujah! Don't enter the danger zone. Second Timothy chapter three. <laughs> Glory. Is did, did you know what, what the beauty of the praise and worship is? Because you change the atmosphere. We just shoot every demon out of here. Brought the presence of God. And you change. You're not thinking about what you've done today, how tired you were, what you've done, or even how you felt. Because before all this, I felt like poop. But praise God, I don't care now. See, so you hit a I don't care zone. This is a safe zone. When you hit the safe zone, it's great. That's why the word says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high. That's a safe zone. Anything else is dangerous. 
In verse 1, would you read it with me? 2 Timothy chapter 3. But know this, that in the what? Last days, perilous times. That, that word perilous means dangerous. Dangerous. Dangerous times will come. We are in dangerous times right now. And there are dangerous zones that you and I got to avoid. Now, I want you to understand, the enemy's camp's not a dangerous zone. It's an area where you and I are to enter, to destroy. If you're walking right with God, there ain't nothing dangerous out there except for sin. But there are areas that are dangerous zones for a believer. It says this. Okay, here's a couple dangerous zones. Men will be the lovers of themselves. Hello, that's a dangerous zone, isn't it? Lovers of money, danger. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control or control over self, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. That's dangerous zones. Having a form of godliness, that's religious. But denying its power, denying the presence of God. That's where a person does not rely on God's presence. They rely on intellect, how much they know. And from such people turn away. In other words, don't associate because associations will bring impartations. There are people that are dangerous zones. Amen? Glory. Perilous times, dangerous times. <clears throat> Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. These are dangerous zones, not twilight zones. Amen? 1 Samuel chapter 15. That's why the Lord puts boundaries in our life. Amen? Amen. Because there are dangerous zones. Listen, when you're driving down the road, you see a double line? It means don't pass, or it's a dangerous zone. When you're coming to a light, it turns yellow. It says, warning, you're, hit again. you're getting ready to enter a dangerous zone. If you keep going and it turns red, you've entered a dangerous zone. Amen. So God always prepares us. He always warns us. That's why there's a witness within us that says, no. Hold on, homie. Sometimes, what are you, nuts? Get out of there. Believe me, when you have a relationship with the Lord, he talks sometimes like you talk. Because he knows your language. Amen? He's called me a bonehead a few times, believe me. I'm not going to number them, but... 1 Samuel 15, 22. Oh, do you like my glasses? <laughs> Praise God. Global. You can buy these on upscale thrift. Listen, I left my bag at home. I had to use whatever glasses were available, okay? <laughs> These are like back up, back up, and way back up. <laughs> These are what I wear in my office, you know what I'm saying? It frightens people when I come for counsel. Hi. <laughs> this guy's crazy. He's a pastor that wears those kind of glasses? Yes. Praise God. First Corinthians, I mean, first Samuel. Sheesh, kebab. Verse 22, would you read it with me? So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than what? So disobey is what? Danger zone. 
and to heed, in other words, to listen, than the fat of rams. For rebellion is rebellion a danger zone. Amen. Amen. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Because you rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king or warrior. In other words, he's not backing your battles. Does everybody understand that? He won't back your battle when you're out of order. Verse 24. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words because I what? Feared the people and obeyed their voice instead of the Lord's voice. Sin of witchcraft, stubbornness. Sin is a dangerous zone. Obeying the wrong voice will put you in a dangerous zone. In Romans chapter 6. See, we want to stay in the realm of possibilities and get out of the dangerous zones where all things are possible to those who believe. Why? Where you're backed by heaven. Romans 6. Romans 6. I used to be a Roman Catholic. I roamed until I found the truth. And then the truth found me. Praise God. Romans 6, verse 12. Let's speak it together, please. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Lust. Lust is a danger zone. Addiction is lust. Why? Because it's an overwhelming desire. People do strange things when they're bound by lust. They become lustafarians. It's kind of parallel to a Luciferian. Verse 13. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not, brother. Do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. So that blows the theology of one saved, always saved, doesn't it? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. So we know that sin, which is associated with the wages of sin, is death. And we'll go a little bit further here. <clears throat> In verse 19, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness, and the end is what? Everlasting life. For the wages of sin is what? Death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we see the wages of sin, obviously, sin is a danger zone, isn't it? It is darkness. It is the presence. It actually causes separation from God. Anything that causes separation from God puts us in a danger zone. Amen? Now, we, people can enter a temporary danger zone or an eternal danger zone. 
in Proverbs 11. But we've got to begin to recognize that there are danger zones and not just ignore them. Stick them under the rug. Take care of it later. You've got to take care of a danger zone immediately. <clears throat> Proverbs 11. Verse 1 and 2. Let's speak it together. Dishonest skills are an abomination to the Lord. So you think dishonesty, which is called lying, will put you in the danger zone. But a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then what? Comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them. But the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Wow. So there's an area where pride will put a person in the danger zone. Amen? And, and Proverbs 13. In verse 9. Proverbs 13, 9, it says, The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be what? Put out. By pride comes nothing but what? Strife. But with the well-advised is wisdom. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. In verse 17, let's speak it together. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. So if you don't depart from evil, what you've entered? Danger zone. You know, people are going, well, you know, I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, you're, you're not departing from evil. So you're going to share its garbage. Amen? You're going to share it. That's why the word says, and even if you agree with or approve of something that's evil, you will share its same judgment. Remember that danger zone is also judgment zone. Unless you get out quickly of that danger zone, judgment will come upon us. The highway to upright is to depart from evil, and he who keeps his way preserves his soul. Verse 18, pride what? Goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Ah, yes. So we see pride is a danger zone, isn't it? In James chapter 4. Again, we want to get out of these danger zones, avoid danger zones, so we can stay in the realm of possibilities. James 4.1. Let's we'll start there. Let's speak it together. Where do wars and fight come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? So there are areas where a desire for pleasure Depending what kind of pleasure that is can create a danger zone. It says you lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you don't have because you don't ask it. And when you do ask it, you don't receive it because you, don't, you ask amiss that you're going to spend it on your pleasures. In other words, sin, flesh, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself a what? Enemy of God. Well, if you want to be a friend of the world, you just entered the danger zone. 
Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So if you're not submitting to God, you're submitting to the enemy. And you're entering the danger zone. We don't want to be a friend of the world. We are citizens of an eternal kingdom. In Matthew chapter 5. You know, many times people enter a danger zone and try and look to prove or convince themselves that God is approving it. Because they're in the danger zone, there is a veil that comes and, and, and deaf and dumb spirits come. When a person enters that zone, believe me, you, what happens is we welcome and not even realize we welcome the flow of demonic forces. And what happens is then the veil comes, a deaf and dumb spirit comes, and a person becomes almost like frozen in that arena. And they're believing that whatever it is can work to the good. Everybody got it. In Matthew chapter 5, in verse 20. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of what? Judgment. Judgment. So when a person enters the danger zone, the first thing they need to do is repent quickly and get out. Amen? Get out. Because only repentance will allow a way of escape out of the danger zone. Verse 22. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Again, you stay in the danger zone long enough, judgment's going to come. And whoever says to his brother, Racha, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in the danger of hell. So we've got to understand that there are warnings that God has for me and you to protect us from danger zones. That's why we have the word. That's why we have fellowship. When a person begins to break out of fellowship, they've entered the danger zone. Why? Because now the heart becomes hardened. They reject conviction. They reject counsel. They reject correction. And, 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 the, and the enemy's got to convince. Again, when a person enters the danger zone, that veil comes. That deaf and dumb spirit comes. Fear comes. It's like every hell from... Every voice from hell comes, and everybody, and they're speaking. And that person becomes paralyzed and oppressed. And, you know, that's all you have to do. See, the enemy's always inviting us. He's always inviting us in his ring. He challenges you to enter his ring. And if God's not sending you in the ring to battle, you won't win that battle. That's why we must be sent in everything we do. Amen? That's why we are led by the Spirit that are sons of God. See, when you're led by the Spirit, you're sons of God. You have heaven behind you. If you're not led by the Spirit and you're doing it in the flesh or by your emotions, heaven's not backing us. Amen? Ephesians 4. Is everybody okay? See things through. Hear things through, think things through. Amen? So if we see them through, hear them through, think them through, we're going to see the end result of it. And we're not going to make so many foolish mistakes or enter a danger zone. Ephesians 4, verse 25. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Let's speak it together. Therefore, putting away what? Lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. 
Be angry and do not what? Sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Why? Because if you're going to give place to the devil, what are you going to do? You're going to enter the danger zone. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Do not what? Grieve. grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? When you grieve the Holy Spirit, he steps back. And let me tell you, your next step is into the danger zone. Amen? Do not grieve the Holy Spirit <clears throat> of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you and me. How many of y'all know that unforgiveness puts you immediately in the danger zone? Holding a grudge. Offense. Amen. Even rejection will put a person in the danger zone. That's why the, wor the word says we're to deny ourselves, right? Again, I've never seen a dead person be offended. Danger zones, bitterness, lying, unforgiveness. In <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3. I, th I really believe this is the, one of the most danger zones there are. This is what always leads people into the most dangerous zones. In Revelation chapter 3, in verse 15, Jesus said what? I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot, I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm, man, that is a danger zone. People are easily swayed. See, when a person becomes lukewarm, emotions lead them, not the spirit. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Man, that's the most dangerous place you and I could be. Because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich in white garments and that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve to see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase and therefore be what? Zealous in what? Repent. Turn away from it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him what? Hear. Hear. That's why it's important to ask every day, Lord, grant me eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to what? Follow. See, because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. See, God is waiting on us to open our mouth. See, let me tell you another great, great danger zone. When a person says, oh, the Lord knows my heart. Man, step away. You expect lightning any minute. Oh, God knows my heart. Oh, shut up and get in position. Oh, I can, God knows my heart. I can still touch those unclean things. I can still fornicate. I can still... You know, no. Not in the eyes of God. We've got to begin to see through the eyes of God, not through the eyes of men or the eyes of emotion. Amen? Matthew 23. When you see the word woe in the Bible, W-O-E means without eternity. Those are danger zones. Matthew 23, 
verse 25. And this doesn't mean slow up, whoa, like a horse, you know. This means, yo, idiot, wake up. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, and what? Hypocrites. Hypocrites is a danger zone. For you paid, oh, wait a minute, wrong one. For you, for you cleanse the outward, outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which inward appear beautifully outwardly. But which indeed appear beautifully outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and are all uncleanliness, uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of what? Hypocrisy and what? Lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the mo uh, monuments of the righteous and say if we had lived in the days of our fathers we would not be taken with them in the blood of the prophets therefore you are witnesses against yourself that you are sons of those who murder the prophets fill up then the measure of your father's guilt serpents brood of vipers look at what he's calling them how can you escape the condemnation of hell ye so again, when you see the word woe, it means danger zone. You may even hear the Holy Spirit say, woe. What are you doing? In Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7, in verse 22. Danger zones. Abilities. Matthew 7, verse 22. Would you read it with me? He says what? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, then many wonders in your name, and then I will declare to them, I never what? Knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. E. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will... Liken him a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Why? Because there was practicing what? Lawlessness, things that displease God, or what we call disobedience. Matthew 13. <clears throat> There's sometimes you got to just depart from yourself. You find yourself, you know, your fruit's starting to stink a little bit, whatever. I mean, get out of there. Tell yourself, get behind me. Because obviously it's leading you instead of the Spirit. Matthew 13, 37. And Jesus answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked ones. So the these were devil's children. Does everybody get it? These are the children of the powers of darkness. Why? Because until a person's unplugged from the world, he's still under a servant of darkness. Amen? The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom. Now, I want you to grab hold of this, because there are demon children, children of Satan, 
in the kingdom of God. Is everybody okay? The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that what? Offend and those who practice what? Lawlessness. And will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear, let him hear. Because they what? They practiced lawlessness. Amen? In James chapter 2. <clears throat> Danger zones. <clears throat> Repent and get out of them quickly. James chapter 2 and verse 14. Let's speak it. James 2.14, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warned and filled, but you do not give them things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is what? Dead. So without faith, it doesn't please God, does it? That's a danger zone, isn't it? Now, faith comes by hearing, doesn't it? So when God speaks, we see. When we see what he speaks, we do it. That's called faith. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 18. But someone will say to you, have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even demons believe in our tr and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that without that faith, without works, is what? Dead. So we can't please God without faith. And again, faith comes by hearing, and when he speaks, we see it, and then we move. <clears throat> in Galatians chapter 6. Danger zones. Galatians chapter 6. In verse 7. Let's speak it together. Do not be what? Deceived. How many all know deception will put you in a danger zone? God is not mocked for whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will, will the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we don't lose what? Don't lose. In other words, we don't let go. So sowing to the flesh is going to put us in a danger zone. Amen. First Corinthians six. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter six and verse eight. Let's speak it together. Know you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. Well, those are all danger zones. 
And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not what? Helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Why? Because if you get under the power of any, it's gonna, it could lead you into the danger zone. Amen? Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And did I say Galatians 5? Yeah. In verse 13. Let's speak it together. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty or freedom. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say, then walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. So you don't do the things that you wish or desire. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I told you beforehand, just as I also tell you in time past, that those who practice such things will what? Not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, they've severed themselves from eternal life. They've definitely entered the danger zone. In fact, it's very hot in that arena. In Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5 and verse 8. <clears throat> verse 7. Eh, verse 6. <laughs> Let's speak it. Verse 6, let no one deceive you with what? Empty words, because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers of them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Why? Because if you do, it's going to lead you into the danger zone. Amen? Where to what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of these, those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by light. For whatever makes manifest is light. So we're to expose darkness. Amen? 2 Corinthians 6. Second Corinthians chapter six. <clears throat> In verse fourteen. Danger zone. Do not be unevenly yoked with what? Unbelievers. Don't go marry someone that's not a believer. That's plumb dumb. Well, God told me to marry. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He wouldn't come against his own work. God's not a liar. Well, yeah, he said that once we get married, they're going to come to the Lord. No, don't marry them until they come to the Lord. And why, 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 why take good when you can wait for the best? Don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers for what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? What part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God. And they'll be my people. If they'll do this, what? 
Come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what's unclean. Why? Because if you touch something unclean, it's going to bring you into where? Danger zone. And then I will receive you. I'll be a father to you. You'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfecting holiness in the fear or reverence to God. Let me tell you, when the fear of the Lord leaves a person, they've entered danger zone. Don't be yoked. Those are children of the world until they're unplugged. Amen? Don't touch things that are unclean. Luke chapter 9. Danger zone. We want to stay away, avoid, and when we fall into it, get out as quickly as possible so we can get into the realm of what? Possibilities. Where heaven is behind you. In Luke 9.23. Let's speak it. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny. Deny himself, pick up his cross, which is also known as the sword, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is to a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or lost? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and his angel and his fathers and the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. And I believe that there are many here who are not going to taste death till we see the kingdom of God because we are the generation of his return. Amen. In John chapter 10. <clears throat> That's why this is training for reigning. We don't do Bible studies. We do training sessions. This is a manual. Amen. This is a military operation, not a religious operation. We are officers. Holy Ghost boot camp. Officers training school. John 10, 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Let me share with you. When you enter the danger zone, that's what begins to manifest. You begin things steal, kill, destroy. Things start to collapse. Things start to be lost. People get lukewarm. All kinds of things begin to happen. He says, I've come that they may have life and that they may have it, what? More abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the what? Sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by my sheep. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice, and they will be one flock and one shepherd. Again, hearing the voice of God is essential, isn't it? And it's not always just hearing a verbal voice. It's an unction also. It's knowing what God is saying. It's a knowing. You know what pleases him and displeases him. We already know it. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to go through trials and tribulations. Amen? It doesn't mean you're not going to get sick. It doesn't mean that you're not going to do something. Look, at welcome to the earth. Stuff happens. It doesn't mean you're driving down the road and you don't get in an accident. Hello? And I'm not saying the devil wasn't trying to kill you. That's possible. But we have the victory. We overcome the things of the world. 
But we have to stay in position, don't we? And any, so we got to stay away and avoid the danger zones, even when you're driving. Amen? Let me tell you, I, uh, riding a motorcycle, you got to be a defensive driver. Amen? You got to be, you got to see what, you got to think what that person's thinking. Because there are people that will stop, and they won't even see it. They'll just come in front of you. I've almost been run over many times if I wasn't watching already. I've actually put my boot on a car. Boom! Yo, get out of here. Beep the horn, and you go, ah. and they should be hearing my bike. There's no reason why they don't hear it. They must have the music up or whatever. But we've got to be defensive drivers in the spirit. Amen? We've got to avoid the danger zones and the potholes. <laughs> In Jude 14, or Jude 14, in the book of Jude, verse 14, we'll close here. Danger zones. <clears throat> Is everybody okay? In verse 14, let's speak it together. <clears throat> now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Who's that? Us. To execute judgment on all. To convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are what? Grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own loss. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And how they told you that there would be what? Mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions. Not having the Spirit or being filled with the, Let me tell you, being filled with the Spirit, man, that's going to assist you from going into the danger zone. Why? Because the Spirit's going to tell you things to come. He's going to guide you to all truth. That's why it's called the Spirit of truth. The problem is, is when people drift from fellowship, from worship, because corporate worship is wonderful. When there's that corporate worship, listen, there's not a hymn book in this place. And there will never be a hymn book here. We ain't hymning. We're howling. Amen? We're jumping for joy and going after God. We want his presence because without his presence, we're nothing. This is not an intellectual thing. This is a heart thing. It's a relationship. Amen? So in this, he tells us, man, be careful. Stay filled with the Spirit of God so you can stay in position. Then you're all led by the Spirit. Amen? That's why he says in verse 20, look at this. But you, beloved, what? Building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in tongues. That's praying in the Spirit. That's called praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen? You stir yourself up. Why, Keith? You connect. See, when the enemy calls a disconnect, people drift and start to head toward danger zone. Anytime there's disconnect, danger zone. Amen? And then what does he say? Man, you're going to build yourself up, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. Why? As you're building yourself up, it's going to what? Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until, unto eternal life. And on some have what? Compassion. Make a distinction. But others save with what? Fear. Pulling them out of the fire, having even the garment Defiled by the flesh. Now to him who's able to keep me and you from stumbling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our God, Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. Stay out of the danger zone. 
Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let these seeds that's been imparted in us tonight be protected by the blood of Jesus so it grows and bears fruit for your glory, that it, it goes from mind to heart so it becomes a living part of our life that we may see, that we may hear, and that we may follow in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and go cast the devil out.